Hello there, everybody. What Culture Wrestling's Adam Cleary here, back again with our most bankable source of pre pay per view hits last minute rumours. Now it's the Royal Rumble on the horizon and where the rest of its big four pay-per-view brothers and sisters can under deliver somewhat. On the shocks, the stones, the surprises and the special guests, the Rumble never lets us down. And mercifully for those of us who make a living off the content, capital C there, this year is absolutely no exception. All four of the main event matches, the women's two and the men's two title matches, they look Fairly cloudy at the minute, pretty much anything could happen with them, so we're expecting all manner of shocks and stuns, surprises, special guests, what I've just said, to happen at the Rumble. Now, admittedly, the winner of the men's does look slightly wrapped up, but the entire rest of the card could throw up surprises. So, you know the drill by now. We have scoured the murky, dirty, horrible depths of the internet to find the big rumours that are doing around about the show, so you don't have to. So, with no further ado, my name is Adam Cleary. This is the Wrestling Rumours Advisory Board, and we've slightly changed it this year. They're star rating the rumours instead of doing the slightly confusing words, and this is every single last minute rumor for the Royal Rumble you need to know. Number 10, John Cena is out. Very out of nowhere, this one, and we've already sort of done it as a new story, so I'm just gonna get it out of the way quite quickly. John Cena, despite his impassioned promo on the other week's Raw about being in the Rumble and then winning it, so we could go on and break Ric Flair's completely made up record. According to reports in the Wrestling Observer, he is out of the show completely. Now the story goes here from WWE's perspective that he picked up an ankle injury against Drew Gallotire, Drew McAway, Drew McIntyre the other week on Raw and now his involvement is questionable but the actual story is that he was going to get jumped by Lars Sullivan on the show who would then enter the Rumble in his place setting up a match between the pair of them at WrestleMania but of course because of the Lars stuff that's all up in the air. Now I don't want to speculate too much on this one as the details surrounding the whole Lars thing are both murky and quite sensitive but all we know is he's taking a break from WWE at the moment to concentrate on his health and he's going to be welcomed back as and when he's feeling better. That's obviously now not going to be in time for the Rumble so they've scuppered the Cena plans entirely. Can't stop the lightning fist! <sighs> I'd let him lightning fist me. I mean, sure, John Cena could be out, but what about Juan? <laughs> John Cena likes them big, so I'm surprised he's missing the biggest show of the year. Number nine, Kevin Owens returns. This would be nice now, wouldn't it? Kevin Owens has been off our screens for months, I wanna say since about October when Bobby Lashley put him on the shelf. But despite being cleared and fit and ready and willing and Gable, God remember that catchphrase, to return, WWE have apparently let loose that he's not gonna be back until WrestleMania at the very earliest, which is weird. Why would you? Why would you have him at home for three months when he's fit? But where weirdness sprouts in WWE, the internet will always turn up right on time to spray a little bit of common sense on it. The reason they're trying to put you off the scent of a Kevin Owens Royal Rumble return is because they want to put you off the scent of a Kevin Owens Royal Rumble return, thus making it a much bigger surprise. There's good logic to it as well as the main event scene is currently chock full of people who think they should be at the top of the card. Brock's there, Braun's there, Finn's there, Seth's there, Drew is there. There's not really much room for Kevin Owens to come back in at the top of Raw, but since Bobby Lashley put him on the shelf and is the Intercontinental Champion and doesn't have a logical opponent for WrestleMania, see where I'm going with that one? But he's having such a nice time with his cats. J'espère que Kevin Owens reviendra. Yeah, that's right, I speak foreign. By the way, Owens, ich liebe dich. I'm looking forward to JBL saying that he's got a good feeling he's gonna win. Because he's fat. Uh -huh. <laughs> Number eight. EC3 debuts. Now, of course, when I say debuts, I don't mean makes his actual television debut. He's already done that, hasn't he? He's been loitering around Raw and SmackDown like some creepy sex offender in the bushes, but he's yet to make his in-ring debut on television for the company. So the logical place to do that is the relatively neutral ground of the Royal Rumble. Nice little poetry to that one, because if you remember, it was Royal Rumble weekend where he was first spotted in the crowd at NXT TakeOver, announcing that he'd signed with WWE. So having him debut in the Rumble and picking a fight with somebody and building towards a WrestleMania feud seems like the obvious way to do it. The talk at the minute is Dean Ambrose for EC3, and I would honestly rather shit an organ. Who cares? Ooh, you get muscles, oh, yeah, whatever. Get some talent. <laughs> EC3 debuts at the Royal Rumble. I'd say there's only a 1% chance of that happening. Hey, get it? 1%? One, one, one yeah. Oh, that's not funny. Yeah, by all means, debut the one guy to have a stink or a takeover for the past three years. 
Number seven, Shawn Michaels. Mercifully, mercifully, there is almost zero chance whatsoever of this actually happening. The sad fact is, though, with the return already under his massive weird belt on his strange patent leather trousers, you can rule nothing out for Shawn Michaels in the future. He was the only man in wrestling who stayed retired right up until the moment that he didn't. Even if by his own admission, his crown jewel comeback was a bit of a stinker and it reminded him why he stayed retired in the first place. He could. Now, in my incredibly humble opinion, a WrestleMania match for him feels a little bit like too much of a stretch. He didn't enjoy himself enough back in the ring for him to really want to go one-on-one -on -one with somebody else his age and just sour his legacy further. But a Royal Rumble return, a brief one where the crowd get the pop, he gets to do his entrance, he gets to have a fitting end to his career beyond the crown jewel payday. That does make sense. And according to reports in The Citizen, I really had to delve deep, for that one, that could be what happens. I actually quite like the idea, to be perfectly honest. He probably feels that his last time out wasn't really worthy of his legacy. And I'm sure the US crowd feels slightly robbed that when he did come out of retirement, it wasn't for them. So it does sort of line up, but not happening. How will he find the time between his naps? I wonder if he'll have grown his hair back or, you know, stayed bald for a movie. Not for anyone, mate. Look, now I know Shawn Michaels says he's retired, but I think he's got one eye on WrestleMania. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Number six, Shayna Baszler debuts. Only a matter of time for this one now, surely, isn't it? Shayna Baszler has dominated the NXT women's division pretty much since she took the title from Ember Moon at WrestleMania weekend last year, I want to say. When she goes to the main roster, she is a ready-made star. And by the way, the main roster is absolutely desperate for a vicious heel. She has a title defense against Bianca Belair at TakeOver this weekend, who also feels ready-made to step into that spot. So yeah, I can't see her being undevelopmental anymore because well, she's not really got much more developing to do. Not really quite sure what you do with her after she debuts because WWE don't seem to like women walking straight into the main event scene when they come up from NXT, like Becky, Charlotte, Sasha, Bailey, Alexa Bliss, Nia Jax, Ember Moon, anyone else I've forgotten. They all had to do something before they got anywhere near the title picture. But then again, they did throw that rule out for Ronda Rousey, who's obviously quite similar to Baszler in her background. She'd be a good ally, she'd be a good opponent if she hangs around, so I don't really know what they're going to do with her, but expect it to start on Sunday. I guess someone's going to have to take Ronda's spot. Couldn't think of anything funny for that. <laughs> <laughs> An anagram of Shayna Baszler is Lazy Hen Ass Bra, which makes about as much sense as Shayna Baszler coming in at the Rumble. Vince, meet Shayna, a winner in MMA in the nastiest heel we've had in years. Nice to meet you, Shayna. What size rule are you? <laughs> <laughs> Number five, a host of NXT appearances. Of course, that's the thing about NXT wrestlers being in the Royal Rumble. It doesn't always have to be a fully fledged call up. They can just be there. Now, if you scour the internet for long enough, which is pretty much my entire job, admittedly, you will find every single name in NXT being touted by somebody to make an appearance. But the most consistent and indeed the most credible names that keep cropping up are Alistair Black, The Velveteen Dream and Pete Dunne. Those three make a lot of sense in this regard because obviously they're people the crowd would love to see. They'd get huge reactions, but all three of them feel like there's still work for them to do on their respective brands. Like I think Alistair Black needs another run with the NXT Championship. I think Velveteen Dream needs to just polish off his TV stuff a little bit more. And Pete Dunne is currently the flag bearer, the guy doing all the really heavy lifting on NXT UK. Now, as I say, all of them would be hugely well received this Sunday, but I would be astonished if any of them are making it a permanent thing yet. You're just picking random names out of a hat now, aren't you, Cleary? Yeah, 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 who cares? I mean, the most important thing is, how is Titus gonna make a tit of himself this year? Just don't put Joe Coffey in there, otherwise Pete Dunne will accidentally get eliminated. Number four, Hulk Hogan. I mean, I hope not, but the talk that Hogan is gonna be the special guest host of WrestleMania 35 continues to gather slightly problematic steam. Look, I'll just get this out of the way because I didn't really do a full video on it. Hogan is obviously a legend. He is wrestling. Without him, there probably wouldn't be a WWE right now, and you cannot question his contribution to every single person that currently goes between those ropes. But should they have brought him back in the way they did, where he was still largely unapologetic for what he did. No. Now, am I saying he should never have come back? Am I saying there weren't ways to do that? Absolutely not. He almost definitely should have eventually, and there almost definitely were good ways to do it. But cynically using the death 
of Mean Gene just to wheel him out in front of a US crowd to make sure nobody, nobody would boo. That is minging. That said though, he is now definitely back and there's nothing interchangeable soy boy cooks like me can do about it. So if he is going to host WrestleMania, then I don't know, kicking that off at the Royal Rumble, huge pop from the crowd, nice little announcement does make a bit of sense. I personally think we'll wait to fill half an hour on TV with it, but there you go. When it comes crashing down, but you come back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> As my close personal friend Booker T would say, Hulk Hogan, we go. Can't right, haven't pointed the sign, but changed the word WrestleMania to sorry it's the closest he'll ever get. <laughs> How many stars? That's <laughs> many stars. Number three, Batista returns. Despite them only vaguely teasing it on SmackDown 1000, WWE do definitely have a big wet rubbery one for the idea of doing Batista versus Triple H at WrestleMania. Now on a card that's probably gonna have loads of matches that the fans definitely want to see, some concession does need to be made for Vince McMahon getting to watch two absolute units just run into each other. Crucially though, when Big Dave himself spoke to groundbreaking international jet set heartthrob wrestling journalist literally me last year, he did say he was open for a return if it could be done right. The real question, which is, you know, how, how big is your... From there, the rumors have continued to spiral. WWE will approach him as and when his schedule allows, including these latest rumors, in sports key and a quick bit of research done by yours truly reveals that of all the films he's currently involved in they are all in post-production meaning his job is done and the only thing he's got coming up is the Denis Villeneuve remake of June which is in pre-production and doesn't have a script yet so won't start filming until let's have a think sometime sometime after April almost like he's deliberately left a gap in his schedule from January to April can't think why. Anyway, there's probably no real way you can set up him versus Triple H in the Rumble. This is three months to kill, but you have not come back, get his nice big pop, then appear on television and say he's waiting for a challenge. He's come back because there's unfinished business, and then, then you do something with Triple H for the next, next few weeks. And plus, the last time he came back at a Rumble with a night of doing something at WrestleMania, it didn't quite go the way I'm sure he was hoping it would, so this would be a nice way for the fans to remember him. I am HO. Are they saying Blue Teaster or Boo Teaster? I was saying booty stuff. Saying booty stuff. At the end of the day, the big question we all want answered is how big is Batista's desire to get back in the ring? Sounds like a badunk a dunk push. Good for him. Number two, they unveil The Rock. <laughs> yeah, so WWE have a little bit of a problem for WrestleMania weekend. I'm not sure if you're aware of this story, but they pushed TakeOver back to Friday night and put the Hall of Fame on the Saturday instead. Basically, the, the thought process there is that people will fly in for TakeOver on the Friday because they'll have nothing else to do on the Saturday in New York, but twiddle their thumbs. They'll go to the Hall of Fame as well, and it'll be this great big weekend for everybody. Ugh, awkward. One thing they seem to either forget or not care about was that Ring of Honor are having their G1 Supercard that Saturday night, which means the Hall of Fame, which is hours long and just consists of people talking, is going head to head against a wrestling show at Madison Square Gardens, that'll be really, really, really good. As well as everything else that happens on the Saturday night of WrestleMania weekend. I'm not an expert. Well, I'm meant to be, but I'm not. I don't think they're gonna win that. So how do you fix that? How do you guarantee that people will either watch or attend the Hall of Fame when there's gonna be literally millions of things better to do that night? Well, the simple answer is you put a name on it that people cannot afford to miss. You make that Hall of Fame a destination event, a once in a lifetime experience, and the way you do that is with a rock. Now, WWE have wanted the rock for a Hall of Fame for many, many years. Now, they tried last year. We know that they're trying this year. We know that if they don't get it, they'll try again next year. But the stars may have just aligned perfectly for it to happen because of this movie, the Page film. The Rock isn't just in that, he has produced that. It's his baby. He is investing a lot of his soul into that doing well. And if WWE offered to promote that to the heavens and give him a platform for which he could promote it as well, then he could be talked into it. It doesn't matter if The Rock is in the Hall of Fame. Sorry, I really couldn't help myself. Yeah, let him in so he can join legends like Drew Carey, Coco Beware, and the bloke who looks like he's had his forehead plowed. <laughs> Spending millions just to own ROH. Never change, Vince. Actually, you know, do change because Raw's absolutely shit. <laughs>
Number one, Ember Moon wins. Straight up, there is so much going on in the women's division right now. I mean, it's got the hottest story, probably got the hottest belt, arguably got the two hottest single stars. If the winner of the Rumble does not somehow advance the story of Becky, Charlotte and Ronda, doesn't somehow get them closer to a WrestleMania match, I will... What will I do? I'll eat any one item off this shelf. They have so many hoops they have to make the three of them jump through to make that WrestleMania match happen. The three of them, as it stands, aren't going to come into contact at the Royal Rumble. Two of them are competing for different belts across different brands, and one of them is in the Rumble itself. So how the hell you pull that together with only two pay-per-views left is astounding. But even more astounding, of course, if an outsider wins that match. And the only name being touted with any kind of credibility in that regard, according to Digital Spy, is Ember Moon. If you remember, she made her debut in last year's Rumble, and she's been in the women's mid-card, but not badly booked, I would say. They're obviously protecting her for a bit of a run later on, and could it be now? I don't think so, but I mean, I've been wrong before. I mean, here's the thing. We've heard today that Ronda is probably gone after Mania, and from there, they're going to hope that a number of women step up to fill that gap. They obviously see Ember Moon as being one of them. They called her up that quickly from NXT, and let's face it, she's really, 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 really good, but... Pulling the trigger on it as a main event and now, when you've still got so much extra to do, feels a bit... I don't know what it feels like. It feels like a complete stretch. That's what it feels like. Nope. You know what? I think she's got a good chance. All right, clear, mate. You just put the, put the gun down, mate. Yeah, yeah. It's Becky's year. It's, it's Becky's year. Ember Moon's winning. Waxa. <laughs> So there you have it, those are all the last minute rumours for the 2019 Royal Rumble that somebody came up with in their brain, wrote down, then I read on the internet somewhere, put in an article, converted to a script, presented in front of this camera and decided that you, yes you, needed to know them. No need to thank me, it's literally, literally my job. Let me know what you made of them all as well as any you've heard in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. In the meantime though, I have of course been What Culture's Adam Cleary and I'll see you Sunday. Bye.